Oh, my Lord in heaven, hell it be thy name. So my mom came into town and it was my son's birthday and it's been about a week, a little over a week since I sat down to film and I am so behind and I have so much to tell y'all and I have so much makeup to share with y'all. Today we're going to be playing predominantly with new stuff from Tower 28. I have lip liners, I have lip gloss, I have mascara, I have my current shade, new shade, Larchmont in... I don't know if I'm saying that right. In the sunny days, I have some blushes. They haven't sent the mauve stuff to me yet. It's all coming in piecemeal, but I'm done waiting. I just want to show you all the mascara and I really just want to catch up. So let's go ahead and jump in. Ah, welcome to new people who came over from Amanda's channel. This is definitely a little higher key, a little probably more chaotic than Amanda's channel, but I think that we have a similar vibe. One of the things today that we're gonna be discussing is how we're gonna kind of achieve something that looks nice and hopefully minimal as far as the complexion is concerned, even though I'm having what I would like to call stressed skin at the moment. We've got stress breakouts, we've got hormones going on, everything's a little overpigmented right now, everything is quite overstimulated because I've been trying to treat whatever this is with various different remedies to minimal avail. <laughs> And so I don't want to go in with a full coverage foundation or anything. Obviously I'm gonna be using the sunny days today, but I do wanna try and get something that looks somewhat perfected. I did a really long time ago make a video called something to the effect of the Glossier look back when Glossier was the only brand or one of the only brands doing that kind of look with problem skin because I had pretty bad acne and I had a pretty bad picking problem and I'm still prone to picking. I found that if you kind of chase down the redness with blush, I was wearing so much blush at the time and I really still do, that you know, you don't actually have to go in with full coverage. You can just spot conceal and then play to the weaknesses and turn them into strengths kind of thing. So this is a little bit yellow for me. Melrose is the other one that I was using and it's a more accurate undertone match. And this is more of a better, the tint, the amount, the lightness. <laughs> There's a word and I can't find it. Oh my gosh, it might be because I have, and I don't know if you can see this, it's probably gonna get worse throughout the next few videos because that's what bruising tends to do. There is a massive bruise right here, squarely on the bridge of my nose. So what happened was, let me get my concealer out and I'll tell y'all what happened. I'm gonna go in with the new one from Milk today. Honestly, the jury's out. I'm not sure about the way that it wears. It's kind of dry. It like soaks up a lot of powder and then it's dry. So I'm trying to figure out if that's a condition of my skin or actually the nature of the formula, but I'm still testing this out and I'm gonna use this because it has quite a lot of coverage. So this is Milk Makeup Future Fluid All Over Cream Concealer and I have it in the shade 4N. I'm gonna put this on the back of my hand and apply it with a brush. Because a little does go a long way. I feel like I end up applying too much when I put it right on my face. Oh, what's this? You know, just a collections notice. We'll get to that in a second too. It's been a busy week, okay? <laughs> That's why I didn't take questions going into this video because we've got plenty to talk about already. All right, I'm gonna use my Rare Beauty concealer brush here. Yesterday, I took my mom to the airport so she could fly back home. She's in Florida, I'm in New Jersey. When I got back, I had planned to use the last couple of hours after driving back to try and get a little head start catching up, well, head start catching up, right? Gain a little bit on the work that I had gotten so behind on and two things happened. One, I got that letter in the mail. And the other thing was I went to like try and clean up my room because while she was in town, things just got away from us. It was just, you know what I mean? You have so much going on and a two year old running around and it was his birthday. And like every single day was so packed full of stuff. My kids slept for 18 hours straight on Saturday night and he missed soccer practice the next morning. I know, a two year old at soccer practice, trust me, it's adorable. But anyway, one of the things that got away from me was just like putting clothes away. And I went to 
put some stuff in my closet and we have really weak drywall, like something that I couldn't have ever really anticipated, even if we had bought the house not sight unseen, which we did buy the house sight unseen in the middle of the pandemic. I don't think that we would have like been able to clock the fact that the drywall is garbage. <laughs> and so <laughs> my closet was starting to collapse, like the bar, right? And like the shelf that it's connected to. It's one of those, you know, closet design kind of branded, you know, I'm not really sure what brand it probably is, but like someone came in there and installed it and the screws are coming out of the wall. So I did not have the time or the resources at that moment to, you know, pull everything out, try and find some other place to put it and hire somebody to put it with a long-term solution. Like I just needed something for right now until I can figure it out long-term. And so I went into this closet behind me that's behind that painting because I don't use the actual crossbar in there, like the clothes hanging bar. I don't use that rod. And so there are two hangers that hold the rod. So I went in there and unscrewed that so that I could just go and reinforce that rod in my bedroom. I always say, well, what will be on my two tombstone, she was handy. And so I just figured it out and I did it. And it worked great. The bar is now stabilized. It's holding up all of my very heavy clothing. A plus. The problem was, I thought, I'm going to grab this in a second. I thought that this crossbar was plastic. You know, the rod that clothing would hang on. And it's only about yay long. I figured that thing was going to be like a piece of PVC. It was just going to go doink and like, no big deal. It's not PVC and it didn't go doink and it was a big deal. It's metal. It's a double up rod that was just shrunk down like this and that baby rolled out of its little hook and you can see the makeup. It clocked me right in the nose, fam. <laughs> like right there. <laughs> I saw stars. I was like, oh no, on top of everything else, I just like, punched myself in the face with an inanimate object. I have no one to blame but myself. And I just stood there like, just trying to collect myself. I was like, that just happened. Yeah, I mean, you know, needless to say, I wasn't really getting a lot of like work done yesterday, but I did get my closet reinforced and I did get punched in the nose. So this bruise right here is probably going to turn multi colors over the next few videos. So that's nice. I'm not gonna do powder just yet. I wanna go in with all of these like bronzers and blushes and all of that. And I wanna tell you about my collections notice. Yeah, I mean, you know, credit is an interesting thing. I am definitely not shading anybody if they've gotten in bad credit or anything like that. But my credit was perfect. I bought a car last year, beginning of last year, and I didn't even get APR on it. Like I bought it for the cost of the vehicle and they still financed me the loan. I'm just paying the amount of the actual price of the car. Interest, I guess is what I'm trying to say. There's no interest. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> I got like turned down for an Ulta card. By the way, I am using the Bronzino in West Coast from Tower 28. I love this stuff. It's just a little bit sporkly. Yeah, like, they were like, hey, do you wanna get an Ulta card? Like that would really help with the amount of makeup that you buy. And I was like, yeah, that's actually a great idea. You know, collect points, whatever, get discounts on stuff that I'm already going to be buying anyway. And I got turned down for an Ulta card with what I thought was, you know, like a over 800 credit score, right? <laughs> So I was like, that's kind of weird, but whatever, you know. I just bought a house, I just bought a car. It's probably a lot of hits to my credit. And it, it left my mind at that point. Plus they don't really tell you that you got like declined. They're just like, oh, you'll get something in the mail. It didn't, you didn't get like per instantly approved or whatever. And I was like, okay, I don't know how this stuff works entirely. So whatever. So then November of last year, I start getting stuff in the mail. I, I got a Samsung tablet. I got a necklace, like all this random crap that I did not not order from a company called Stoneberry. <laughs> Stoneberry is like, I honestly, it seems like one of those predatory lending places because it's like a catalog where you can order things on a short term line of credit that you don't really need like a hard hit to your credit to do is my understanding. Then it's like a wackadoodle interest rate, you know, to be able to pay it off. So they're making their money, no problem. And they'll probably hunt you down if you don't pay it back kind of thing, the same way that like a check cashing place would. So this was my first introduction to something like that. And I was like, what in the world is going on? By the way, this brush 
brush. I know that you're all eyeing it right now. This is the BK 105 and it is the most luxurious, <laughs> lovely bronzer brush. So I call Stoneberry because I'm like, what in the heck is going on? Something is really fishy here. And they said, okay, well this is clearly fraud. And the person is obviously, you know, it's amateur hour because they had it sent to you instead of getting it sent to themselves. So they kind of outed themselves. So I returned the stuff and I was like, okay, I guess that's it. Then I started getting like credit card offers in the mail and like a credit card that I didn't order shows up in the mail and I was like, okay. And I call them and I'm like, all right, I didn't order this, whatever. So then I, you know, I'm obviously onto it at this point. I'm like, what's going on? So I get on my like bank app or whatever and I look at my credit score thing and there's all these hits to my credit and I was like, this sucks. So that's all through Experian. So I call Experian. What color is this? After hours, cute. I call up Experian and I'm like, hey, we need to get this stuff taken care of. And we go line by line and I dispute these things as fraud. Well, we happen upon an address in Denver, Colorado associated with a car loan. Turns out they bought a BMW 3 Series using my social security number to get the loan and then they just stopped paying on it. They did pay on it for a while. So then I get all of these things kind of like removed and I'm giving a few weeks in between, you know, four or five weeks in between and I'm kind of calling back Experian a few times and I'm trying, trying, trying to get them all taken off. And the only thing that won't fall off is this car loan. I've been like waiting to see if Experian can take care of it. And they're like contacting the other credit bureaus and everything on my behalf. But then I get this collections notice in the mail about the car loan saying that I still owe like over $11,000 on somebody's BMW. Yeah, that's so pretty. <laughs> so pretty. So again, that was after hours. And I'm going to do an eye look. I'm going to use some new Kaja that I got. Let's pick out a trio here. They sent me all their best sellers. So I ended up with some that I already had. And then I ended up with a bunch of new ones. Maybe it's Chocolate Dahlia. That's a vibe. That's a mood. I like that a lot. Okay. And it might not be the only thing that we use today because I might go for something a little bit electric. I got some new stuff from Kaleidos as well, but we will just, we will just play it by ear. So I called the credit bureau yesterday and I, not the credit bureau, sorry, the collections agency. And I told them this is fraud. I've been trying to get it taken care of with Experian, but I need to just tell y'all that like, this isn't my debt. And man, they treat you like such a piece of scum when you call a collections agency. I'm sure that they have empathy fatigue because people are always giving them sob stories and like probably rightly so. But I was getting a little irritated with the guy because I was like, well, can I just call first third bank? Cause that's who owns the car loan. And he's like, they're just gonna redirect you back to me. Like he was some kind of like Messiah of the DMV. He was really like pulling rank with me. And he basically told me that it boiled down to, I needed a police report in order to prove that it wasn't me, I needed to file a police report because that was, I was like, how do you want me to prove that I didn't do something? Like, I don't have evidence. I don't, there's, <laughs> it's like that meme where it's like, can you show us evidence of the product that you didn't receive? And they're just, they're just, they're empty hands. Like that's how I felt. And the guy was like, well, you need to get a police report. And I was like, this is so silly, but okay, you know, cause it's fraud. You know, the only thing I've ever gotten a police report for was getting in a car accident. And they usually show up and they're like, why did you you call me. You know what I mean? Like police reports always feel so like a formality, like they feel kind of perfunctory, but I guess that that was what, you know, I had to do. And so I called my local police officer's station. That's what it's called. The local police station. And you know, they just pick up the phone. They're like, Hey, what's up? Cause I live in a very small town. There's obviously not much going on. And this guy was so cool. He was so nice. It was like, uh, he was like kind of psyched to get like a CSI moment, I think. <laughs> Cause I was like, Hey, you know, I, I need to actually like get a police report about this identity theft and stuff. And he's like, this is fraud. You need to get, you know, as much information X, Y, and Z about it as you can. And that will um, allow us to actually like investigate this as fraud and try and like find the person and stuff. And um, rest assured, when I find them, I'm not gonna dox them, but I'll give as much detail as I feel entitled to, okay? Because it's one thing 
to try and pull some BS and like, you know, get by if you're like broke or whatever. It sucks and you shouldn't, but like I would have more sympathy if they hadn't gone out and bought a 2018 BMW 3 Series. Do you know what I mean? Like that costs more than my car. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, like that's just, it's it's just so egregious. So I end up calling First Third Bank back and they tell me that since it's all hooked up to my social security number, I have access to all the information. The only thing they didn't have was my name or their name, the person's name, because they of course used my name and my birthday because they were using my social security number, but I have their address, I know what their car VIN number is, I know what their address is, I know what their phone number is, I know where they work. I forwarded all of that to the police officer and he has already written me back saying that this is the best report, this is the best victim statement that I've gotten in a long time. And I was like, cool, gold star for me. And he called me already and told me like, you know, he's making progress on it, etc. But yeah, I mean, I do think that like these things can often feel very like Karen-y. Like I, you know, I'm a white woman and I am very self-aware about the fact that like, you know, pulling the call the cops card is something that's very coded specifically to benefit people who look like me. But in order to not owe someone 11,000, I'm sorry, 11,000. $392.74 on somebody else's BMW, they required that I get a police report. So that is what I have been doing. All of yesterday after dropping my mom off at the airport, I spent the rest of the day being a detective, trying to hunt down the people who spent money using my social security number and getting bopped in the face with a, a closet clothing rod. That's how that went. The amount of time and stress and energy that it takes to resolve something like this, it sucks so much because like, like I said, calling the collections agency, they made me feel so bad about myself. And I was like, I didn't do anything. Someone sold my information. There was like a data breach probably. And someone like sold my information on the dark web, I'm sure. And for that reason, I'm getting talked to like I am the scum on the bottom of this guy's shoe. The only other time that that's happened to me was someone hacked my PayPal one time and they racked up a bunch of charges and the people at PayPal were really threatening to me. They were just like, we'll investigate this, but we're not promising anything in parentheses, you piece of crap, you know? Yeah. So. It is, it's like wild how humiliating it is for you to have to like make all of these calls because someone else pulled some BS on you, you know? So this is Chocolate Dahlia. Don't tell my mom, but I'm gonna get this one for her for Christmas. Everything that I was using, like while she was here, everything I wore and stuff like that, she would just have a fit over it. And I'm, I just racked up a bunch of Christmas ideas, you know? So it's two mattes and a really pleasant shimmer. It's like this pretty kind of like Bambi gold. You know what I mean? It's got like a neutral undertone to it. Sorry, Bambi is like, it doesn't look like Bambi. It's just what we used to call it in hair school. It was like a neutral beige blonde. We called it Bambi blonde because it wasn't like white blonde and it wasn't yellow blonde. We just called it Bambi blonde. I don't know why. So it is like a Bambi blonde color. Pity. It's just such a pretty like neutral moment. And my mom had like, a visceral like <laughs> connection to it the moment she opened it. She was like, oh my gosh, this is the one. But yeah, my mother also had an absolute fit over my Reformation cardigan that finally came back into stock. I bought it last year, but they made them again this year. And so I bought that for her. I'm gonna do my brows and my eyeliner. And we will come back and talk about this mascara and the new lip liner and some, some lip gloss.
that I kind of want to do something a little bit fun here. So Kaleidos, they sent two new eyeshadow quads and they sent these really amazing eyeliners. You have to be careful, like don't roll them up too much because they're kind of brittle, but this color right here, it's this like iridescent teal blue. I kind of want to do something here. It's subtle, but I like it. <laughs> it's just a little, a little something, something, you know, and it kind of brings that together. So these are called, oh gosh, it's so tiny. Epiphany Glow Melt on Eyeliner, and this is in the shade Sea Sparkle. Love that for me. And then the actual eyeliner on top of that is the Persona in Plum because I love it. I love it so much. It's so good. It's like almost brown but instead it's got just a little bit of like subtle purple to it. And it really is so great for still giving me like the visual impact of thicker lashes. But if it's a more kind of like toned down eye look, it's a lot less graphic. It's so good. It's so good. I love it. And it's such a long wearing formula. Let's talk about this mascara. So this is the new Make Waves mascara. It only comes in black so far. And this is the Tower 28 mascara. This is the first mascara they've ever put out. And it is not a tubing mascara to my knowledge, but it does have really good long wearing properties. It has a pretty normal rinse off and the wand is a little bit wild. It's like you push on this and it like actually bows a little bit. If you can see that, I don't want to get it everywhere. But the thing here is that it is a high performance mascara that's actually good for sensitive eyes. My mom can't wear the Thrive mascara because it makes her eyes water. And then when her eyes water, the little tubes come off, you know? So I got her on this and she bought it when she was here. We went to Sephora and she just like, she was like, I know what I'm doing. And she like went over the Tower 28 and, and picked this up because it was, it was just that good to her, so. I am certainly not the first person or even in the minority for saying that I love just the whole package. I like the application. I like the wear of the formula. I like the way that it looks. I like the rinse off. This is my new mascara of choice to recommend to people who want really impactful build on their lashes and like lengthening, but they can't wear a tubing mascara. It's like my favorite conventional mascara I've ever used. And I mean, granted, I've only had it for a little while, so I don't know how it's going to mature in the tube, but like the fullness that it builds on my lashes is so awesome. Plus there's like these subtle differences between mascaras a lot of times. Cause I have been trying a lot of mascaras, like traditional regular formula mascaras lately. And honestly, a lot of them are great. Like the wear time on them is really good most of the time, but they do have these subtle differences. Like I tried this on and wore it like one eye with this and one eye versus the Big Bang mascara from Aether recently. And that one is more matte and it doesn't lengthen quite as much. It's a little more like thick. And then this one is, I mean, it'll literally, <laughs> It'll build as long as you have patience to build it. As far as like just adding length to your eyelashes, it is wild. And it really is super clump resistant. It's just very like separating for the lashes, but it's just, it's got a lot of visual impact. And the new one from Typology that I'm gonna be sharing with y'all in a video coming up soon, it's actually a tubing mascara, but it is a very, 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 very subtle tubing mascara. So I'm excited to share that one with y'all. And then I also got the new one, not the new one, it might be, it's just new to me, from LH Cosmetics. They sent me a bunch of stuff after that video that I made, and I'm so psyched. I'm so psyched to share all that with y'all too. Again, I'm so behind, I have so much great stuff. Like so much good stuff, not just to do like get ready with me's with, but also uh, like do full on reviews. Like I haven't even had a chance to give you all my thoughts on the new House Labs foundation, things like that. <laughs> all that to say the LH Cosmetics mascara, it's kind of blue, like not blue, blue, but like blue black, you know? And that was a little odd to me. All right, I got that everywhere. <laughs> We're gonna let that dry for a minute and then I'll scrape it off because I'm having kind of a clockwork orange moment. Oh, I wanted to tell you all too, it's Kosa's uh, friends and family. So they're doing the 20% off site wide right now. And 
This is great. Someone was asking me if it also has like great skincare benefits. I don't know what like about the long-term skincare benefits, but as far as like skin prep and giving your skin a really great kind of moisturized feel, it's amazing for that. I've been using it on both sides of my makeup routine. So this is the Kosas Plump and Juicy Vegan Collagen Spray on Serum. It's in glass, which I was not expecting, which is so awesome. It's got a lovely spray to it, like a really nice mist. So you get, you can just kind of do like two or three mists and like that's plenty. And it sets your makeup really nicely too. I don't feel like it has like a fragrance. I haven't read the ingredients, I don't know. But like it, it probably does, but it's so subtle. It might just be the ingredients. It's like a very, very subtle, just a smell to it. I wouldn't say that it's as smoothing as like Mac Fix Plus or something, but it is a uh, vegan collagen, lifting, plumping, peptides, microbiome balancing, plant probiotics, and soothing artemisia flower extract. So to me, it's more of a skin prep moment, like a primer mist essentially. And if you don't need a lot of smoothing at the end, you know, this will still melt your makeup down a little bit. So I, I like it very, very much. Yeah, it says for best results, spray serum on clean skin morning and night. So they're not claiming that it's a setting mist. It's a fantastic skincare spray. I like it very much, Lee, and you can get everything on Kosas at 20% off right now. All right, let's take a somewhat clean spoolie here. Just try and get this all taken care of. So there's the mascara in all her glory. And that is not, like I said, taking the time to put on, you know, 18 layers of it or something because you can, and you can get a ton, ton of length out of it. But if you're somebody who wants hunky chunky, like almost clogged up looking lashes, at least with a fresh tube, that's not really what they're claiming. Okay, so I have the new lip liners also. Oh, okay. Well, that's coming off for a minute. So there are three of these one liner multi liners from Tower 28. I have the shades Draw me work of art and fill me in. We love a good pun, don't we? There they are. So we have draw me. It's a gorgeous chocolate brown work of art. Oops, a little bit brittle khaki. It's a really pretty like in between soft beige. And then we have fill me in very like pure dusty pink. So I am going to resharpen that one because it just broke. No harm, no foul. And we're going to go with work of art. It's like rich cream. It's not like that super slippy gel. Also, I think Kosa's reformulated theirs. Like they just released those and apparently they didn't go over very well. They were really, really like stiff and waxy, so I don't know. And they do say this is a multi-liner, so I guess I could use it on my eyeballs too. But their milky glosses, Tower 28's milky glosses have always worked really well with lip liner. Like they just look good with a skin tone adjacent lip liner. So this is pistachio. I don't know if this is like the right one to use today, but it's the one that I pulled because it looked similar to that one. I don't know, we'll see. It's a little bit pink. So for finishing touches here, the thing that looks weird is that I need to powder. It's the one thing I haven't done and I thought I was gonna be able to get away without doing it at all. I might need contour as well. Okay, so I feel very confident in saying that this is the vibe today. I love how it turned out. There was some noise that was happening. So in that time, I just kind of, tweaked a couple of things. I enhanced the eyeliner just a little bit. I dipped a brush into the actual darkest shade in this trio from Kaja, the Chocolate Dahlia, and just kind of refined that line a little bit and got a little bit more in the lash line because the mascara is black. And so it's a little bit more visual impact than that plum eyeliner is on its own. So did that. I added a little bit of this Dior blush wake everything up a little bit. Adds honestly like more impact than using a highlighter. And I hit it with a little bit of MAC Fix Plus Magic Radiance just to bring back the dewiness because my skin's really dry and stressed out right now. All right, let's chat about the two new products that we tried today before I give you all my final thoughts, any updated thoughts on these things. So starting with the mascara. So you can get 10% off by just like signing up on Tower 28's website if you're new, if you don't wanna buy on Sephora or something. And the mascara is 20 bucks. What is it? A safe for sensitive eyes vegan mascara that lengthens, defines, and holds a curl with Aquaflex technology for amped up natural looking lashes. How do I use it? Use the inner wave of the dual sided brush to build volume, I'm sorry, yeah, to build up volume and the longer bristles to lengthen and define lashes. Oh, wait. Okay, so the inner wave and the longer Bristles. So this is defining and this is building. Oh. Can you see that? They're not wrong. <sighs> so you take like the valley there 
the little top of the smile and that holds a lot more product. Okay, I just stabbed myself in the eye again. <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna wait for that to dry and scrape it off again. The Breakthrough Triple Wave Wand has three flexible suspended bands that lengthen and define every single lash and build boldness. The clean formula is lightweight and endlessly buildable without getting crunchy or clumpy and is easy to wash off, keeping irritation and breakage at bay. It's so true. The way, like I said, you can like, that's the first thing you realize about it is that it just builds endlessly and it is incredibly lightweight. So the new one liner multi liner is $15, comes in three shades. Like I said, this is a creamy matte, high pigment multi-use liner for lips, eyes, and face to create infinite looks with versatility. Made with good for you moisturizing ingredients like shea butter and marula oil, these pencils glide on without tugging or dragging and are super blendable. I did like wipe it off the back of my hand. They're not crazy budge proof or something like that. So if you use them on your eyes, they're not going to be like waterproof or you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if they'll be waterproof. They're just not going to be budge proof. They're not like the persona liners where like once they're down, they're down kind of thing. How do I use it? Richly pigmented, use it to contour lips, define eyes and add a pinch of color to cheeks or some fun freckles. Plus pair with shine on lip jelly for a juicy pop of color and shine. Like so. What else should I know? One liner is safe for sensitive eyes so you can save your happy in love tears. It's made with 100% clean ingredients, silicone free, vegan, and cruelty free. That is something that has been really valuable for me lately as my skin has been really ticked off is things that are just a little bit cleaner. I, I hesitate to even use that word. We've really been through the gauntlet with clean routine 2019 and everything. And clean means something different to everybody. But for me, there are just brands that don't necessarily say like, clean because it's non-toxic or something, but clean in the sense that like, it's free of a lot of common allergens. So it's safe for people who are prone to, you know what I mean? Like their eyes getting itchy or their skin breaking out in eczema and stuff like that. So like Tower 28 has always been very like eczema oriented. They always wanna try and make their stuff safe for people who are prone to eczema. I am prone to psoriasis and all sorts of other maladies on my skin. And somebody actually commented recently that the iconic London brand is safe for fungal acne, which I had never had before and I had also never heard before, but I just wanna go ahead and say, if I don't get to use this like really soon in a video, I wanna tell y'all like, I completely wanted to write this off. I was like, oh, it's just another skin tint coming out of this ocean of skin tints lately. This is gorgeous. It's a lighter weight version to me of the Fenty Ease Drop, but it's so like apparently geared towards being hypoallergenic. It does have that really nice satin finish. It's a little less coverage and it's super, super like light and thin on the skin. It comes out of like, you know what I mean, like a dropper bottle, so. If the Fenty was too comedogenic for you and you want a little less coverage, this is so lovely. <laughs> it's super pretty. I like it way better than the Summer Fridays. Summer Fridays is just kind of like, it's dewy, it's pretty, it's there. This is a little bit more innovative. Oh, and the milk. We need to talk about the milk concealer. I'm just kind of patching up where I had to scrape that off for a second time underneath my eyeball just now. All right, so this is the Milk Makeup Future Fluid All Over Cream Concealer. 30 shades. I have, like I said, the shade 4N. If I am 4N in a shade range, it goes pretty light. And 30NC is very deep. Fantastic, love to see it. It does look like they spend a lot of time in the medium to deep category, which is great. Like it looks equally distributed. Three olive tones, I think. We all know if you watch like Hannah's channel or something that one of the least catered to olives or the least, uh, you know, acknowledged olives tends to be the ones that are very, very, very fair. So we will have to see from people who have that unique skin tone, whether this has something for them, but there are some olive tones being accounted for in there. And the deeps go neutral, cool, neutral, warm, and warm. So it's $29. What it is, a multi-use medium to full coverage concealer that covers sculpts and hydrates for a lightweight, crease-proof, natural finish. 92% natural, clean, vegan, cruelty-free, paraben-free, fragrance-free, silicone-free, alcohol-free, and gluten-free. How to use using the dab and swipe applicator to cover hyperpigmentation and brighten under is as easy as a dab, a swipe, and a blend. Dab the pointed tip of the applicator over targeted areas like breakouts and the corners of your nose. Swipe using the flat side to cover dark circles and circles 
and even skin tone blend into skin with fingertips, a brush or a sponge. So they're talking about the unique shape of the applicator. It does have that nice, you know, satisfying kind of kiss sound when you open it and it's pointy. Although I find that when I apply this right to the skin, it's a lot. <laughs> so I did manage to get like a nice natural level of finish out of this. And this is the first milk makeup complexion product I've found that has such a large spectrum of what kind of coverage you can get from it. Like their original stick foundation started out like really nice on the skin, but when you blended it, it would grab on your pores and it wouldn't ever really sheer out in a really natural looking way. Whereas like their, what is it called? Their sunshine skin tint and the like eye brightener that goes with it. Beautiful, 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 but like won't build. And then the other one, the like little creamy concealer thing and their other foundation that they came out with before, I can't remember, but that one doesn't ever set down on its own. It's very frustrating. It's like super silicone-y, I think, or maybe no silicones at all. Either way, it just never sets down. It just stays molten and I'm like crazy aware of it. So I'm not sure. I think they've at least phased out that foundation. Maybe the concealer will be, you know, shortly following since this is out now, but this is definitely a giant leap forward for Milk Makeup in terms of a long wearing, true like coverage cosmetic complexion product for them. And I, I think that it's really good. I just think that when I do build it up, it says that it doesn't look cakey. I'm like, it kind of does because it, it's quite hydrating. It will kind of soak up a little bit more powder than I want it to, but then it does kind of dry out after the fact. So I'm not sure that I really recommend it. Like if you're going to go for this level of coverage, I really feel like this was them trying to go for trying to mimic the Kosas Revealer Concealer and the Kosas Revealer Concealer is still the one. Still the one. I, I, it's gonna be this one. They're so similar. You can tell that that's what they were going for. And the Kosas remains just a much easier product to use that is a lot more like effective for those claims. So final thoughts on Tower 28 and this release. I mean, granted, we will use the moves at some point, but I know those formulas inside and out. I'm very excited just to use those colors. But talking about the actual new products and then, you know, how it pertains to Tower 28 overall, I really like the lip liners. I like that they're kind of all over pencils and they come in these three very pretty, very wearable kind of like skin adjacent shades. They don't go super, super deep, but also I don't feel like this is the end of the line either. I could be wrong, but it does feel like something where they're going to to keep iterating on it if it does well. They've always been very measured with their releases. I don't know if y'all have like followed the career of Tower 28 over the years, but like it was a very long time before even like bronzers came out. It was just blushes and these like clear lip glosses for a long time. And then they just iterated and made milky. They've been very, very careful about the, where they place their next foot. And even the sunny days when it came out got a lot of acclaim because even though it only has 30 shades, this skin tint did cover such an even spectrum of skin tones. And it is a very light coverage complexion product. So, it, you know, the expectation wasn't for like 800 shades, but it was one of the first ones that had such a good distribution. I really feel like all of these things really follow suit, but like this, the Allure list just came out and I don't know what's on it. I haven't looked, but I wouldn't be surprised if this starts winning awards. I think it already has. And they said that in the ad, they're like, you know, this is already award winning and it hasn't even come out yet kind of thing. This is just a very special mascara. You get it in your hands and you just, as soon as you interact with it, you realize it. You're like, oh, this doesn't do any of the things that I am careful to avoid with other mascara formulas. Like you can get this look, yes, out of other mascaras, but it's not this easy and it's not this versatile and it's not this buildable and it doesn't wear this long. I will stick in some end of day footage here so you can see it doesn't smudge and I wore it through hot yoga, okay? And then the wash off is actually really nice. Like it's a very easy to wash off formula. I don't know how they did it, okay? Apparently they went through like hundreds of different versions of the mascara and everything. It's very excellent. It is now the mascara that I will continue to recommend to people who can't wear a tubing mascara or are irritated by other even conventional mascara formulas. Like this is one that I feel confident telling people who have sensitive eyes, like this is going to outperform whatever you're using. So I adore this and it's only 20 bucks for a prestige mascara. That's pretty darn good for what we've like come to expect. That's very, very good. So I hope they come out with a brown, like that would be, ugh, I would be over the moon. So 
Anyway, yes, I want to thank Tower28 for sending me those in PR. I want to thank Kaja oh, for sending me so many of these, y'all. Chocolate Dahlia is amazing, but they all are. You're going to be seeing these popping up in my videos left, right, and center because I've said this a million times, I'll say it again. There are so many kind of like overhyped eyeshadow palettes that could be avoided by just going for the like highly concentrated excellence of these Kaja trios because like a lot of times when you look at a palette you're really only excited about a few shades anyway and you can scratch the itch and get a super luxurious formula that you're actually going to use every single day from a Kaja trio for what are these like $26 or something something like that. Either way, I use these all the time. They travel really well. I'm psyched to keep trying these from Kaleidos. They're lovely. They're really smooth. They're really pretty. The only thing is, like I said, don't crank them up too far because they'll break off. They're a little bit brittle. I think it's probably just because, you know, multi-chromes, this one isn't multi-chrome. It's just like foiled, but most of them are multi-chrome. Multi-chrome, I think, is just kind of a, a sensitive kind of particle to put in things. And, you know, for something long wearing that's also got this lovely kind of like neon pop on the skin, the way that it reflects light and everything, you just have to be a little bit more gentle with it, the same way that you would have to be a little bit more gentle with an eyeshadow that behaves like this. So if you do end up buying them, then that is my advice. But I love how this turned out. I really kind of went in winging it a little bit. And this is, this is what we ended up with. We didn't even get into every single thing I wanted to tell you all about today. I still wanted to talk about taking Simon to Sesame Place, which was stress -a me place, but maybe that's actually it. It's just a very stressful place. That might be all you need to know. I thought it was going to be very like smooth and exciting and it was extremely stressful, but the, you know what? That's, that's what the next video is for. So I hope y'all enjoyed this. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if y'all did. If you ever want to support your favorite creators, the best way to do that is to share their content on your own social media so that your friends find them. It's just a great way to get new eyes. So I always appreciate when you'll do that. So thank you. And I want to thank you for hanging out with me today. I love you all so much and I will see you in the next one.